Hello, we are Eva and Eva, the young ambassadors of the Konsol Theater. This is our Draw the IPCC. And please don't mind the stains. We're using an old whiteboard to make this video production as sustainable as possible. But what actually is the IPCC? I will explain it to you. For this, we need to know about several things. Why do we even have the IPCC? What exactly are its aim? Which people are sitting in there? And what are their efforts? Let's begin with our first question. What is the reason for the existence of the IPCC? Back in 1988, a lot of people did not believe that humans are partly responsible for climate change. Therefore, the main goal of the IPCC originally was to collect proof supporting the idea that humans are indeed accountable for global warming. Until then, there was no organization or initiative that focused only on addressing climate change. As a result, the United Nations and the World Meteorological Congress collaborated to establish the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC. Since then, experts from all over the world are coming together to collect information about climate change. And that is the only topic they work on. Can you explain what working on climate change means for the IPCC? Sure. It means that the IPCC's researcher gather all the information available about climate change from different scientific sources. They read reports and studies from all over the world and summarize them. Having compiled all the information, they write a report consisting of many hundred pages. Since this is such a time-consuming task, a new report is published only every six years. Furthermore, climate change is a global and constantly changing process, which means that new information can be gathered in a rapid time. Let's take a closer look at the reports, as they are the most important part of the IPCC's work. The reports of the IPCC deal with three big topics. What is causing climate change and which factors are influencing it? What kind of consequences does it have for the Earth and which outcomes are possible? The last two topics relate to the future development of climate change. Here the IPCC drafts forecasts, or rather models. Imagine a map. The starting point of this map is the climate data of the present. Based on this, the IPCC outlines various paths that we as a society could take from this starting point. So you see that a decisive factor in the IPCC's climate module for the future is human behavior. However, all behavior is a variable that mo is most difficult to predict. Despite this uncertainty, the IPCC assumes that there is only one way left to avoid exceeding a global warming of more than 1.5 degrees compared to pre-industrial levels. Okay, okay. That means the IPCC collects data on global warming and then makes predictions about how the climate might develop. All this is then written in the reports. And what happens with all this information? Well, the IPCC will never dictate governments which climate policy they have to implement. It only provides them with ideas of how to address global warming and explains policymakers the consequences of further climate change. For example, I spoke earlier about the 1.5 degree goal. The IPCC has described exactly what global warming of 1.5 degrees means for life on Earth and how this can still be achieved. But wait a minute, what even is the 1.5 degree goal? It is mentioned in many climate-related discussions nowadays, but what does it even mean? To understand that, we need to take a look a bit back further. To the United Nations Climate Conference in 2015. Back then, 196 countries negotiated the so-called Paris Agreement a treaty in which they pledged themselves to take measurements to limit the average warming of the planet. The official goal is, as quoted, well under 2 degrees, but 1.5 degrees, as a boundary not to be crossed, is named as well. The key word here is average, since different regions of the world are warming faster than others. This number isn't something to be measured at one specific location. And how is this connected to the IPCC? In response to the Paris Agreement of 2015, the IPCC was invited to put together a report focusing exclusively on the implications of a world 
where temperatures rise to this level. This report titled Special Report on Global Warming of 1.5 Degrees. It was published in 2018. But what exactly are the contents of this report? What happens if the average rise of temperature exceeds 1.5 degrees? One consequence of a further increase in temperature are rising sea levels, caused by melting mountain glaciers. If the temperature climbs past the barrier of 2 degrees, the sea levels will be probably be 10 cm higher by the year 2100 than in a scenario of a 1.5 increase, with the possibility of several additional meters. This has imminent consequences for people living in coastal regions. Many islands could be simply cease to exist. The growing heat in itself is a whole other issue, of course. With a chain of different problems like water shortages, supply of food and the spread of tropical diseases, to name a few. Extreme weather events like hurricanes are also more likely to occur more often the higher the temperature gets. Another important aspect is the loss of biodiversity, especially the one of insects, with unpredictable effects on global ecosystems following that. If temperatures do not increase this much, climate change will still have a grave effect. But the Earth will most likely be a slightly nicer place to live than if we do nothing. But as urgent as this all is, the report not only suggests that reaching the 1.5 degree goal is still possible, if steps of action are taken now, it provides clear fields in which changes need to be made. For this, two ways of acting can be recognized. Making sure that, at best, there are no greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere anymore, and removing greenhouse gases that have already been emitted. To stop emitting CO2, society has to change as whole. That means political and economic instruments like prices on the CO2, for example, have to be implemented. Specifically, the energy system needs to be changed to 100% renewable energies, like solar or wind energy. In connection to this, low emissions technologies in traffic need to be extended. The other option, capturing already emitted greenhouse gases, should certainly not be forgotten considering the fact that CO2 remains in the atmosphere for more than a hundred years. Reforestation could help with that, as well as a technology called carbon dioxide removal, which, as the name says, aims to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. Here it is important to be cautious though. Mitigation deterrence, a process in which actions is delayed while waiting for better technologies to be invented until it's too late, must not occur. Well, that sounds very good. We have an organization that is only working on climate change. And no one can say it is pushing any agenda, because it just reviews the research that is already there. So, does that mean that everything is perfect? No. When it comes to the IPCC, there has been a lot of ongoing doubt and criticism. In response to that, the IPCC was reviewed by the Inter-Academy Council which is an international network of scientific academics. Much like the IPCC, it provides governments and international organizations with expert knowledge, but it also independently rates organizations. One major aspect of the findings in the review focuses on the process of working on the reports. Instead of answering each and every annotation that is made during the review period, the AIC suggests to summarize the most important questions and annotations and to answer those in detail, leading to a shorter and less complicated process. Another important aspect is the field of communication. According to the IAC, it could be useful for the IPCC to work out a strategy of communication that is transparent, fast and appropriate. What should also be clarified is who speaks in the name of the IPCC and how it is represented to the outside world. Moving beyond the AIC report, the fact that no clear orders of acting are included in the publications of the IPCC could be criticized as well. Considering that the policies governments have pledged themselves to right now allow an increase of temperature of 3.4 degrees by 2100, sufficient action steps are urgently needed. You lost me at that octopus. 
Weren't we talking about climate change? Okay, so let's summarize the most important facts about the IPCC. The IPCC is gathering information, reports and studies about global warming and climate change. The authors working for it compile these in a big report every six years, in which they show different outcomes and actions for the future of planet Earth. Finally, they also show steps of actions that are needed to be taken in order to fight climate change. Back in 2015, the United Nations negotiated the Paris Agreement, cementing the goal of not letting the increase of temperature exceed 1.5 degrees in comparison to pre-industrial levels. From the IPCC report, further illustrating this goal, we learned about the severe consequences if we don't act now. More extreme weather conditions, loss of biodiversity and more ecological disasters in general. If we do Star Trek now, that means if the governments introduce more effective policies that are followed by the industry, reaching the 1.5 goal is still possible. Reaching it will probably keep living circumstances on Earth from getting as bad as they could get if the goal is not reached. Keep in mind that these problems will not just disappear though. We also covered several issues that are criticized about the IPCC. One huge problem is the high level of bureaucracy, with too many barriers. Hence the octopus. This is also connected to the way information is gathered and to the fact that, instead of separating the reports into different smaller topics, everything is grouped together in one huge report. The IPCC is still lacking communication strategies and transparency as well. Furthermore, not just a look into possible futures is needed, but actual policy advice, along with clear steps to be taken. Okay, that's all very nice. But what does this have to do with me and my work? The theater I work at is very small. What efforts can I even take? In fact, the number of CO2 neutral theater productions are increasing. One cr concrete example of all the measures that could be taken is climate neutral mobility. But you are right. Connecting the IPCC to our everyday life and work and understanding what its guidelines mean for us in reality is not easy. And that's the reason why we want to discuss this topic with you further.